This is Optobotics we're coming with another V review, and this time we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. Something that I wasn't entirely too confident in actually doing a review for. But I asked a bunch of friends of mine, I asked some followers on Twitter, I asked people on YouTube, if they would like to see me do a review on this. And the majority of people actually said, yeah, they would like to see it. So what we're looking at is the new iPhone 4, the latest iPhone from the folks over at Apple. And as you can see in terms of the packaging, now my previous phone that I had was just the regular 3G phone. I didn't have the 3GS, so I'm going to do a comparison between the two. There is the 3GS, which is considerably faster than the 3G, but that's all I have. So unfortunately, that's all I can really compare it to. But for the packaging, you can see that Apple chose to go with a much smaller looking packaging. Shorter, and uh, you can see, I mean, it's much thinner. Well dimensionally I suppose I mean every, every aspect this box is just smaller nicer box so I really like the way this looks with the white it's very sharp you got a nice Apple logo Apple 4 or iPhone 4 all that stuff and this box is really really kind of big this I actually use this as a stand for my Unicron figure so um, overall nice looking packaging when you open it it just slides apart just like the previous models um, well it's not in here but this is where the iPhone would be then you remove this you have inside here yeah, open it. I'm trying to open it without ripping anything. You open it up and fingertips. <laughs> it's got a, a little instructional thing here. iPhone in a cover, so it comes with the the Apple stickers. One thing that I am not noticing, uh, it doesn't have anything to remove the SIM card. That's interesting. I wonder if you actually can remove it or if you're not supposed to remove it. So there's that, and just fold that right back there, nothing special. And then you have the regular earbuds, which I still haven't opened mine, and the charger. I'm, just, I'm keeping all this stuff in here because I'm probably not going to use this all that much. And it comes with the actual USB connector for your laptop or anything, but I am using that and I don't have that around here. So we're going to put this away. and. Let us unveil and bring out the iPhones. Okay guys, so here are the two iPhones that I've personally owned. Here is the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 3G. As I said, I do not have and I never got the iPhone 3GS. So this will be a comparison between the iPhone 4 and the 3G. There is one that's in between these two and it is faster so it's not going to be a very fair comparison. But for all intents and purposes, you will see a drastic increase in speed. And that's what I really want to kind of highlight. Now in terms of the tech specs for the iPhone 4, remove it from the stand, zooming back a little bit. Uh, as, as I said, in terms of the height, you got about a four and a half inch screen. The width is about uh, 2.31 inches according to Apple.com with a depth of 0.37 inches and a weight of about 4.8 ounces. So not too terribly bad. <laughs> there's my lights. Now you have the option, there's two different options, well actually, there, well there's four different. You can get the black one with the uh, the black outline, which obviously I have. There's one with a white trim. You can also get a 16 gigabyte flash drive or a 32 gigabyte flash drive. I got the black 16 gigabyte. This is only an eight gigabyte and I only about had that half full. So I figured a 16 would be plenty for me. In terms of the display itself, it has a wonderful retina display, which I'll get into a little bit more. Three and a half inch diagonal widescreen multi-touch display. 960 by 640 pixel resolution. It's got a fingerprint resistant, uh, so, well, although, I mean, I mean, it does resist fingerprints kind of, but you can, you can still smear it kind of. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much it for kind of like, you know, the, the specs, I suppose. Uh, it's got an engineered glass, and I'm going to take this off of the Apple's website. All the breakthrough technology in the iPhone 4 is situated between two glossy panels of some kind of glass. I can't say it. Alu Aluminisilicate glass. Whatever. Uh, the same type of glass that is used in windshields of helicopters and high-speed trains. It's chemically strengthened to be 20 times stiffer and 30 times harder than plastic. The glass is ultra durable and more scratch resistant than ever, and it's also recyclable. Um, now there have been, I mean, I'm not going to get into the problems with this thing uh, too terribly much, but there have been some instances where people have dropped it and it has shattered. So, I mean, mine's okay. I haven't dropped it though, so we'll see. Now I was talking about the retina display on this. Now the 960 by 640 backlight 
LCD display boasts a pixel density of 326 pixels per square inch, making it the highest resolution phone screen ever. To achieve this, Apple engineers developed pixels so small, a mere 78 micrometers across, that the human eye can't even distinguish individual pixels. That makes text remarkably sharp and graphics incredibly vivid. IPS technology also provides excellent color and contrast from almost any viewing angle. So very nice retina display. It's got a beautiful stainless steel band all the way around it. Created, they created their own alloy, then forged it to be five times stronger than standard steel. The CNC machine brand is the mounting point for all the components of the iPhone 4. The band provides incredible structural rigidity and allows for the incredibly thin refined design. And it also functions as the iPhone's antenna, uh, which again has been a bit of a problem. The iPhone 4 is powered by the Apple's A4 processor and the engineers designed the A4 pro chip to be remarkably powerful yet remarkably power efficient mobile processor. With it, the iPhone 4 can easily perform complex jobs such as multitasking, editing video, and placing FaceTime calls while maximizing battery life. And I do have to say the battery life, oh, let's turn it on, turn it off, uh, has been really impressive so far. It's got a built-in gyro and accelerometer. Now the accelerometer is present in the previous versions, but the gyroscope is new. The iPhone 4 includes the built-in three axis gyroscope. When paired with the accelerometer, it makes the iPhone capable of advanced motion sensing such as user acceleration, full 3D attitude and rotation axis. Translation, more motion gestures and greater precision for an even better gaming experience. One really cool feature that a lot of people were excited to see right here on the back has the camera and an LED light. The iPhone 4 camera shoots gorgeous 5 megapixel photos and stunning HD video. And with its advanced backside illumination sensor, mm-hmm, yeah, well I said it, it captures beautiful images even in low light settings. The built-in LED flash does double duty. When you're taking pictures, it works as a flash. When you're shooting video, it can stay on to light up the scene. And on the front of the phone, that's right, the built-in camera is perfect for making FaceTime calls and shooting self-portraits. Little camera right there that they finally put in. Also, while most phones have only one microphone, the iPhone 4 has two. The main, the main mic connector is for the phone calls and voice commands. You know, you get that, um, I think that's the speaker, it's right down there, that little fella. The second mic is built into the top near the headphone jack, it's really tiny, I don't even know if you can see it, really tiny, right there, that little guy. It's for FaceTime calls and making your phone calls even better. It works with the main mic to suppress unwanted and distracting background noises such as music and loud conversations. This dual mic noise suppression makes every conversation a quiet one. And of course it's got the multi-touch which we'll get into a little bit later. Just, that's just the nature of the phone itself. A fantastic phone. Now we're going to get this thing fired up and we're going to get it going. I'm going to kind of bring my little stand here just to kind of I'll put you off in the background and I'm going to kind of zoom in on you. Hopefully you guys can see this fairly well. Now you can turn it on by any number of ways. You can hit the power button at the top. There's a little button right here and you can push that and boom, that's me. It's 6.39, Saturday, July 3rd. Uh, slide it to unlock it and there you go. And I'm having a conversation with Ben, so I'll just back out of that right now. And here is the main screen of the phone. Hopefully it shows up fairly well. I hope it's not too bad. The speed on this thing is wonderful. I have all of my apps in folders. Thanks to the iOS 4, we were able to put apps into folders. A fantastic setup, which makes things a whole lot easier to organize. Now, one of the biggest things that this has brought to the iPhone world is the display. Now, I'm going to bring this fella in and this fella, and we're going to open him up. We're going to unlock that. And I don't know if you can really tell, but the vibrance is so much better than this one. Absolutely stunning how good this looks compared to this guy. Also, much faster. One thing that I want to kind of highlight is I'm going to go into utilities. A wonderful app that I highly recommend any iPhone user have is called Free Memory. Now, when you hit it, it kills unwanted things running in the background freeing it up. As you can see, 16.29 megabytes of RAM. This is killing a whole bunch of them, so it's going to be going up. 
we're going to open this guy back up. So you're looking at around 39 megabytes of RAM, which means all the things that it needs to do in the background. This fellow uses multitasking, so it needs a whole lot more RAM. So let's go into that app, and we're going to go again into the free memory. And already you're seeing how much faster this is compared to the previous version. And that's not even as fast as this can go. Now the other way to kill apps is double tap the home screen and that brings up the multitask bar. You can switch through anything that you really want or including having controls for your iPod. Go in here holding it down will bring up the, the delete icon and you can just go around and tap the little red button and you're gonna kill all these apps and you're gonna see this going up because all these uh, apps are being killed We're killing them, killing them, killing them now oops, going into free memory now look at the RAM so much faster the, uh, the, the, the free memory thing doesn't work so well on the new iPhone 4 quite as well as it did for the 3G and 3GS but there's a huge difference. That's gonna handle your multitasking a whole lot better. Speaking of multitasking, you can have this running, hit the home screen, go back, exit out of there, and let's say we wanna load up Twitter. Go into my social folder. Here's Twitter, bring that up. I'm talking to Alex, uh, Grim Grimlock King 87 on Twitter, who's its birthday today, so happy birthday, dude. And again, we're just going to refresh that. And of course, people are talking to me, so now that's refreshed. Now say I want to go back and check my free memory thing, which is now running in the background. You double tap this. There it is. Pick it. And it switches right back to it. Push it one time. Now let's say, um, let me exit out of here. One thing that I really like using it with, let's say we want to use it with a navigation system. I have the GPS drive, or um, it's GPS drive from... Motion X, and we're going to load that up. And of course, I agree. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this is this whole thing will run in the background. Say you get a phone call, that's going to ruin this. You're going to back out. Or let's just uh, bring this up. And you can see it's now running in the background. I can switch back over to Twitter. Here's Twitter. Double tap it again. Switch over to free memory. Still running there, switch over to this guy, and it still has me locked in and knows where I am positionally. Fantastic multitasking, very important to a lot of people, and I'm happy that it finally has it. Now in terms of the speed, let's test it out. We're going to go into games on both of these fellas, see how fast it is compared. Turn on my 3G phone, back out of this, which does not have multitasking, but it does have the iOS 4. I'm going to go into games. And just for a quick comparison, let's play Battleship. So I'm going to hit these two buttons at the same time. I'm going to try to. See which one loads faster. That one's already running. That one, the Battleship sign just came on. It's still loading. And there it is. It took a while to load, didn't it? back out of this. Let's try it again with another game. Let's try it with Skee-Ball. Hit it at the same time. That one recognized me a whole lot longer. You can see this is loaded up and ready to go. This one's still loading. And there it is. Finally ready to go. Back out of that one more time. Let's find uh, something else to play. How about Jeopardy? We're going to hold it down. Hmm. Yeah. Clearly. Crazy. Now, one thing that you can do, say you're playing a game. It's still held all in here. All in there still. In the background. Processes. So fantastic. So multitasking on the iPhone, very, very nice. One other thing, you can, I'll just get rid of this guy, put him off to the back, bring him back out front and center. One really cool thing is 
the camera. Obviously, I do have iMovie, which, eh, I'll get to that later. Photos. And here's just a bunch of goofy pictures that I've taken. And we're going to look at where I got my hair cut earlier today. Fantastic Sam's. <laughs> it's, it's a fantastic camera. And if you want to take pictures, one real cool thing, there is the back of the wall. And you can see there's it looking at the, uh, the iPhone. And then you can see me in the background. But say you want to take a personal picture of yourself. Now you can swap cameras from the back to the front by pushing that button. And there I am. Look at me, boys and girls. There's my camera right there. I'm recording kind of an HD video of me talking already. So it's kind of strange. Whatever. can switch it back to, uh, well, you can switch to a video by swapping it. And now I can do this. And I'm basically, I'm recording an HD video of myself. And I'm looking at you and I'm talking. And it's kind of creepy. Now we can pause that. Or end it. We'll just end it. Swap the camera around. And it now goes back to the thing again. Tap it once and you have a focus, which is really cool. Or you can turn the flash on. And as you can see, it's a very bright light. Uh, that's the flash. I'm not going to point it directly in there. But it's a really bright light. And you can see it lights up fairly well. So we're going to just turn that off, put it on auto. Really cool looking. I really like it. And that's the camera. The camera's fantastic. 5 megapixels. You're going to get beautiful videos with this camera. Beautiful pictures with this camera as well. Uh, if you have been watching Pia's latest videos, all of his latest videos have been filmed with the iPhone 4 and edited right on the phone with iMovie. A fantastic program. It's $4.99. I do recommend it. It's a nice program. It, it, the iPhone comes with a built-in, very basic editor, but overall it's not too terribly bad. So that's HD video recording, editing, and the new pictures camera for the iPhone 4. Now one really cool aspect of the iPhone 4 is the FaceTime. That's the big hyped up thing where you can do video calls. Oh, and I just got a text message from Ben. See if he's on board. He says that he's ready to go, so let's try doing it. To do so, click in phone, and then you bring up his phone number, which, oops, I'll have to blur that out so nobody sees his phone number. We're going to hit FaceTime right here. And it's going to go into this where he's calling Ben. Let's see. And he's still text messaging me. <laughs> me rubbing my face. Connecting. Ooh, this is good. And you can't see anything. But there's Ben. And he's showing us fireworks. Look at that. They're blowing stuff up. How are you doing? It's kind of dark. Sorry. Just... That's okay. I think, uh... I think people can see you. There's my camera. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Oh, wait, yeah. Somebody put a, someone put a sparkler right by Ben's face. That would be fantastic. But so you see, he's he's going around and... Uh, oh. Oh. Uh-oh. I, for, I forgot that uh, it's 7 o'clock here. It's... It's it's ten o'clock where Ben is, so it's kind of hard to see. Ah, and as you can see, he's able to switch the camera around so he can show me things from the back side of the camera. I'm gonna do yeah, the same. My face in the dark. Yeah, I don't know. Can everybody? Uh, oh, it's kind of hard to. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, there you are. There's his mouth. <laughs> How drunk are you? Not, not very, actually. Oh, boo. There we go. So there, now he's showing us fireworks. That's coming from the back side of the camera. Uh, oh. And there he is. There he is. Hi, everybody. Yay, and then you can have fun by taking this little picture of me, and you can move this around. Yeah, hold on. Uh, yeah, hold on. I can actually take a screenshot of you. Oh, he's... Ah. Oh, he paused it. I paused it. Sorry, my fault. Uh, yeah. I can take a screenshot of this and send it to you. Oh, nice. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, while he was doing that, I can flip it around, and um, he's just now looking at my other iPhone that I was showing off. But, but that's about it. So that's FaceTime, guys, and we're able to watch his fireworks, and we can we can have wonderfully romantic evenings together. <laughs> but so thank you, Ben. I appreciate. It. I'll let you get back to your fun. Uh, no problem. Have a good night, Paul. See you, sir. 
So that's FaceTime, guys, and uh, I'm definitely going to have to block out that phone number so people can't see it. Fantastic, fun, and exciting. I love it. Now, this wouldn't be an honest review if I didn't mention some of the problems already inherent with this new iPhone, and some of them are actually fairly warranted. First of all, as I mentioned, this front and the back are glass. Unlike the previous version, which had this plastic or aluminum or whatever background, and you can see the uh, thickness here, um, and this was glass. This being glass on the back has caused a lot of people concern, and a lot of people are worried about it. Now, they talk about how strong it is, but there, are a lot, there have been a lot of people that have complained that if you drop it, this shatters. The screens are shattering fairly easily, I might add. Um, that's one of the problems. And you kind of have to watch out for that. So definitely a case is going to be very beneficial. I'm going to set that off to the back because I'm going to show that off in a minute. The other thing is the uh, reception issue. Everybody has talked about the reception issue. And it's one of those things where I have experienced it on my phone as well. Now there's a bunch of different theories out there. One theory is it's the actual operating system that switches from a more powerful signal to a more reliable signal or something of that nature. They've talked about the design of the phone itself being that the antenna are on the outside. There are three different antenna and I don't remember exactly which is which but this from this line all the way around to this top part is one antenna. From this all the way around to this part is an antenna and then the bottom part is another antenna. Because of that you know, the antenna being on the outside, people have come prob have, have had problems with the reception and the bars dropping and, oh, no, and service going away, apparently, or something. I've seen it. Um, I, it it's something that uh, seems like you can replicate it fairly easily. Now, unlike some people that say that you have to hold the phone like this and do it like this or that or whatever, you, you, you really don't. I hold my phone like this. Um, it's not too It's not too bad. Um, when I'm making a phone call, my, I hold it just like this, and I'm holding it up by the ear. Now, it, it seems as if when you, when you hold it down here and you're touching one antenna to another antenna up here, it's apparently bridging the gap between it, which is causing reception to drop. Now, as you can see, mine's not doing anything. Uh, not right now, but I have had it happen where it has dropped. Um, and oh, the Wi-Fi is kind of getting weak. That's weird. Um, so, and as you can see, I mean, I'm holding both of these right now. Now, you can't, if you do it like this, it's not doing anything. Except there goes one bar right there. Oh, no, it's back up. So, it's at full strength right now. Let's get rid of that. Now, if I hold it and do it like so, does it drop any? And there's one bar gone. There's two bars gone. Three bars. Hmm. That last one seems to be holding pretty good. And again, I'm keeping it just like this, and this is how I'm holding the phone. I'm not holding it really special or anything. Uh, I mean, I'm not cupping it. I'm not holding it really any different. Now, if I take my hand away, and I'm just holding it, I'm not even, I'm just holding, balancing it up here with my two fingers. You see the service comes back. So the other theory is that um, AT&T and Apple calculate differently how the bars show up. That's the other theory. I don't know. I, I, I honestly have no idea why it does it. It is fixed entirely. The, the problem is entirely fixed when you use this, when you use a case, when you don't bridge the, that gap around here. Now, there are a lot of people that are having lawsuits. Class action lawsuits are running around. And the reason is because of the design. It's a faulty design. And realistically, it is a faulty design. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If I'm holding it like this and it causes anything to, to do differently, it's a faulty design. It's designed this way. And people have said, well, you know, Steve Jobs says just hold it differently. Well, this is how I hold my phone. Most right-handed people hold their phone in their left hand. That's just the way it works. So to do this and then to have to, and I keep hitting the button here, and have to buy a case for it, it's kind of crap. Especially since a friend of mine brought it up that it was fairly interesting that up until this came out, Apple themselves never sold a case. There was never an official iPhone case. Now there is, which is kind of interesting. So read into it what you want. That You know, there's that kind of flaw itself. The other flaw happens in the camera. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to show this very well. But as you can see, it's kind of yellowish. Now this is obviously a white board. 
it's coming off very yellow. Um, there you can see. You can see my hand is very much more reddish than it actually is. I mean, there you see my thumb, and then on the camera here, it's reddish. If you've watched Sean Long's videos, he's he's done videos with this new camera, or if you've watched Pia, all of their videos, for some reason, come across very reddish. Uh, a lot of people are saying that there is a problem with the white balance on the camera itself. Now, I don't know if you can actually return it and get a switch it out. I've, I've seen people have talked about that. Uh, I don't actually know if that's true because I haven't tried it. All the problems that I've mentioned have been discovered on my phone. The reception issue, the white balance, and then obviously the glass. I haven't cracked it or anything, but I, I can't imagine why the glass would be stronger on mine as opposed to anyone else's. But again, as I said, you can take this and you can put a case on here and it will correct the issue, except for the fact that you really shouldn't have to correct an issue like that. That should just automatically, oh, hello light. Um, it, it shouldn't be a problem. You shouldn't have to buy something to fix something else. That's kind of bad in my opinion. But those are some of the negatives about the iPhone 4. Now, there really isn't much else to talk about or um, show. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment, send me an email, whatever you want to do. I'll, I'll happily answer anything that you want. Available only right now through AT&T with a contract. The iPhone 4 is gorgeous. It's fantastic. And I can't recommend this thing enough. I absolutely love this phone, and it just went away. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Until, until next time, guys, this is Optobotomus. I'll talk to you later.